What's going on YouTube? Bacon here bringing you another video. This one going to be my week one match for the MWPA season six here in the Earth Division. Uh, this week we're going to be against Jed aka Bionic Soup and the Adelaide Overheat. Uh, Jed's a really nice guy. He's been around the community for a long time. Um, he was actually the commissioner of the Waylord League which is a tier three and below league that I participated in a few months back. Um, so we actually played him there. I believe we 6-0'd him with Subseed Whimsicott, basically. Um, just kind of an oversight and prep there. But I know Jed's, very, uh, Jed's a very good player. He's had some great success in some other leagues. Like, I think the NCL was the one I was recently looking at that he was doing quite well in. Um, so, always a good good time playing Jed. Um, I'm expecting a much closer match this time. On paper, my matchup isn't fantastic i think it's basically even like he's got some issues with my team i've got some issues with his his team i think it's about an even matchup on paper uh basically just looking at the matchup uh really quickly gonna go through both of our teams because i don't do team builders um on his team he's got mew megalopony zapdos nihiligo greninja whimsicott kiram buzzwole rotom heat klefki and dugtrio which can be arena trap um I really wasn't sure if he was going to bring the Dugtrio, like, this is the problem with Dugtrio, it's kind of like Ditto where it forces some prep, so it has good trapping ability here, I'll say, with my Heatran, my Raikou, my Muk, like, it, he could pretty easily just run, like, Z-Ground Dugtrio and trap something and kill it, uh, I don't think he needs to run Choice Scarf Dugtrio, that really wouldn't make sense considering the only things that outspeed him naturally are my Rabumbi and my Aerodactyl, neither of which it really benefits him to trap, so... He could run, like, Life Orb, he could run Choice Band, he could run... I think Z would make the most sense if he was going to run um, run Dugtrio versus me. But um, that thing was kind of a problem in prep, just looking at some of the mons that I brought. Uh, so it was going to be something I had to play around, but if he didn't bring it, uh, or if he did bring it, that would mean he's not bringing some other big threat. Uh, the absolute biggest threat I saw when I was looking at his team was Buzzwole. Sub Buzzwole just destroys me. Like, it can sub up on Conkelder, it can sub up, sub up on Muck, it can sub up on Tapu Bulu if I decide to bring that, sub up on Mamoswine, assuming I'm not carrying good tech. Um, or, like, Life Orb. Like, if I wasn't running Life Orb Mamoswine, he would be able to get a sub up and I couldn't break it. Um, or it could even just sub on me, anticipating me to switch out. Um, so, that thing is a problem. <laughs> huge threat. Uh, I was expecting kind of like a defensive Mew, defensive Zapdos kind of thing. Uh, Greninja made some sense versus me, I thought. Megalopony absolutely made sense versus me. Um, but yeah, just kind of looking at the matchup, those are kind of the main threats I was looking at. Rotom Heat, I thought, had some potential here, as did Klefki. Uh, Klefki could be a potential like Mega Aerodactyl response. It could threaten me out with Prankster Thunder Wave, something like that. I thought was had potential to come, or maybe like a Charty Berry Rotom Heat to help deal with my Aerodactyl. So all of those were like I thought potential brings on his end. So with that in mind, just going right into my team builder. Uh, first member of the team is Shuriken, the Mega Aerodactyl. Uh, naturally outspeeds his whole team, which is very nice for me. Uh, running Stone Edge, Wing Attack, Roost, and Hone Claws. I really didn't feel like I needed additional coverage here. Like, what am I going to do? Stay in on Klefki to go for Earthquake? No. I've got a great switch into Klefki and Alolan Muck, so I felt like it made sense to just run the dual stab and Roost uh, because I don't have hazard removal on this team. Spoilers. Uh, no hazard removal on this team that I brought. So I thought Roost would be really nice if I predict switches out of something like Mega Lopunny or Buzzwool. Uh, if I'm coming on Stealth Rocks damage over the course of the match, I can heal up back to full. Uh, Got 56 in HP, uh, just enough speed to creep the low punny, and then the rest dumped into physical attack, uh, running a Jolly Nature. So, it's a pretty standard Mega Aerodactyl, I think. Like, Home Claws is not so so uncommon on that Pokemon. It's nice that I won't have to miss Stone Edges after going for one. Uh, after Home Claws, Stone Edge does have 107% accuracy, so it's guaranteed to hit. Um, unless he's running, like, Bright Powder or something, <laughs> and even then, it's still pretty likely to hit. So, I felt like, uh, Home Claws was really nice, especially because if I predict switches out into something like Static Zapdos could potentially be a problem, right? Like if Low Punny's in and he predicts me to go for Wing Attack, and I, or if I do go for Wing Attack and he switches into Zapdos and he pairs me, that's really bad. Uh, but since I can live any hit from Mega Low Punny, I'm expecting him to be Timid Nature Mega Low Punny. Even High Jump Kick doesn't knock me out. Um, even Fake Out into High Jump Kick actually doesn't knock me out. I can just go for Home Claws. On a predicted switch, if he does go into Zapdos uh, to try and get the static on me, I now have an 100% accurate Stone Edge that I can whack that thing with, and I'll have avoided the static damage uh, that way. So I feel like Home Claws is pretty valuable in that respect. 
And of course, just to kind of damage boost my way through, like if his team's chipped down, something like a defensive muse not gonna want to take like a plus one stone edge. Um, it can, but it, if it's chipped down a little bit, it's not gonna want to take it. Um, just kind of looking for a late game clean here with Mega Aerodactyl, and I can remove whatever speed control option he's got. I'm assuming he's gonna have something choice scarfed. Uh, I was thinking a few options to choice scarf for him were like Rotom Heat, Greninja, Nihiligo. Buzzwall doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Oh, that's what I was actually creeping. I was speed creeping. Um, Scarf Buzzwool with this set, so it actually doesn't outrun Mega Aerodactyl, so I don't think Scarf Buzzwool made a lot of sense here. So I was thinking either Scarf Rotom Heat, uh, Scarf Nihiligo, or Scarf Greninja made the most sense. Scarf Kira maybe, but you really don't want to be locked into Ice or Dragon Stab with my Heat Ran around. You want to have the ability to hit that thing with Earth Power. So I felt like those three were the most likely options for him to run Choice Scarf this week. Um, but yeah, that's just the nature of Mega Aerodactyl being this fast is going to force that kind of prep. Uh, and I can actually go into my prep knowing that they have to run some kind of option like that. Uh, next up is Friend of Dave, Alolan Muck here with Black Sludge, Poison Touch, uh, Knock Off, Poison Jab, Shadow Sneak, and Flamethrower. Realistically, I'm mostly going to be clicking Poison Jab. Um, getting a poison on anything is going to be really nice for me. Poisons on Buzzwool, Poisons on Zapdos, Poisons on Mew. Like, all of that is really, really nice for me. And it is a 51% chance to, to happen with the Poison Touch plus Poison Jab. Uh, knock Off is also nice to knock off Leftovers, Rocky Helmets, all that kind of nonsense. Uh, I can pretty freely click Knock Off when I'm in on a Mew. Um, yeah, pretty standard to run the Dual Stab on a little muck. I ran Shadow Sneak, kind of regretting it. Um, it was, the idea was like if he was a madman and went hard Dug Trio on a Knock Off, Knock off into Shadow Sneak did knock him out, and I am EV'd uh, such that I can live a non-boosted Earthquake, or like a Life Orb Earthquake, I think, is what I was able to creep for, because I wanted a lot of special defense investment. I max HP, a lot of special defense, and a little bit in physical defense just to live that Earthquake from Doug Trio. so the idea was I could knock it off and then Shadow Sneak it to KO. Um, if he was Ground Z or Choice Band anyways, I still dropped, so I think in the long run, Shadow Sneak really wasn't worth, <laughs> uh, worth the bring. But I did end up having it. I would have rather had something like Curse or run like a Recycle Berry Muck, uh, potentially. Although the Poison Jab spam is kind of nice. Um, I think Shadow Sneak was probably not the most useful thing that I could have run here. Uh, and then I also have Flamethrower on there. So I went for Flamethrower over Fire Punch, because even though Fire Punch is a lot more to Klefki, uh, this is mainly for Buzzwool. So if I predict a switch into Buzzwool, I can go for Flamethrower. It should do something like 35%, which is not great damage, but... Um, the main purpose is that I can flamethrower and break a Buzzwool substitute guaranteed, whereas Fire Punch is, if he's running sub Buzzwool, I feel like Fire Punch is very likely not to break his sub. Um, so that was the whole purpose behind flamethrower. Like I mentioned, my team is really weak to sub Buzzwool, and because my Conkeldor can't touch it, I didn't want two things that can't touch the Conkeldor. That just seemed like a really bad look for me. Um, switching into that Pokemon is hard in the first place. I don't want to be allowing it to get up substitutes and get free hits off on my team. So. That was the idea with the flamethrower there. It's just a flamethrower break his sub if I predict him to go for one. And kind of dissuade him from um, from doing anything but attacking me. Uh, next up here is Conkelder, Twisty with Assault Vest, Guts, uh, Drain Punch, Mock Punch, Knock Off, and Poison Jab. I know I mentioned in my uh, draft recap that sometimes it's nice to not run Guts on Conkelder because you can catch people off guard, running Iron Fist or whatever, but in this case it felt like Guts made the most sense. I can come in on a potential Prankster Thunder Wave from Klefki, I can come in on Will-O-Wisp from Mew or from um, Rotom Heat. Uh, so I just don't really have to fear those things over the course of the match, really. Uh, and also, if I get static by Zapdos, I'll be doing a little bit more damage with my attacks. So I felt like with all of his status options, and he could also run like Stun Spore or something on Whimsicott, um, with all his status options, I felt like it made a lot of sense to run Guts this week. Uh, Drain Punch, Mock Punch, Knock Off, and Poison Jab. Like I mentioned, Hard Wall by the Buzzwall. Um, there's not a whole lot Conkelder can do about that, even if I ran Fire Punch, like, yeah, I'd be breaking the Substitute, but I wouldn't be doing that much damage to him, uh, and I didn't feel like Bulk Up made much sense, especially because I'm still not going to hit the Buzzwool, so, like, what's the point? Uh, Poison Jab is there, specifically for the Whimsicott, if I don't have Muck or something late game, and I don't want him to get up a Substitute for free or whatever, I can click Poison Jab, it should Oko that thing, and I can live a Moonblast from it with my Salt Vest, uh, max HP, max attack, by the way, adamant nature, um, so yeah, knockoffs just re good for a predicted Mew or Zapdos switch in. I feel like those would be the primary switch ins to my Conkelder on his team, or he could potentially go Buzzwool. But even knocking off something from that, assuming he's not Z move, um, is pretty good for me. 
So that kind of made the most sense in my eyes. Mock Punch is there to clean up things like Greninja, Nihiligo, Low Punny, uh, late game if they're all chipped. Uh, Greninja actually doesn't need a whole lot of chip to die to Mock Punch. Mock Punch does over 50 to Low Punny. I think it does about 40 to Nihiligo, uh, but Drain Punch is also obviously good for all of those as well. Uh, Low Punny's doing like max 56 or something like that with a high jump kick, and I can Drain Punch all my health back. Uh, Greninja shouldn't be doing too much to me, even if he's like Psyche and Z extrasensory, that doesn't knock me out from full. Uh, and I can Drain Punch all my health back, like that's kind of the idea with Conkelder, right? Is take a hit, Drain Punch your health back, and then be fine to take on something else later in the game. Uh, so it's a really good response, I think, to things like Kyurem, things like Rotom Heat, things like um, Greninja, Nihiligo. I can come in potentially on all of those Pokemon and just Drain Punch up uh, for the most part. Next up here we got Grace the Raibombi running Focus Sash uh, this week with Shield Dust. Shield Dust prevents uh, him from faking me out with his Low Punny, so if turn one if I'm in against Low Punny I can pretty freely just click Moon Blast or Sticky Web depending on what I see on the other side of the field. Um, got Moon Blast, Sticky Web, Bug Buzz, and Quiver Dance. Yeah, I'm walled by Nihiligo, but like, what am I gonna do? Run HP ground for Nihiligo? I, I don't even know if Raibombi gets Psychic, and it definitely does not get Psy Shock, which is what I would prefer to run if I'm trying to hit the Nihiligo, so... I felt like it made more sense to run Quiver Dance there, just because I can potentially not only set up Sticky Webs on turn 1, but I could also potentially start Quiver Dancing in something's face, especially if he doesn't decide to bring the Nihiligo. Quiver Dance Raibombi actually has a pretty decent matchup versus him, uh, and I could potentially Quiver Dance on something like the Buzzwole later in the game, um, if I can get rid of that thing. Next up here is Thick the Mamoswine with Life Orb Thick Fat, uh, Ice Shard, Hidden Power Flying, Earthquake, and Icicle Crash. Like I mentioned, don't want too many things walled by Buzzwool here. Uh, I am Jolly Nature, so I can outspeed that thing and whack it, or not Jolly Nature, Hasty Nature for the extra damage on the HP Flying. Uh, so Icicle Crash into HP Flying after Stealth Rocks. Yes, after Stealth Rocks should guarantee KO the Buzzwool. I think it might actually KO without the Stealth Rocks even. Um, so the idea being, I go for Icicle Crash on the switch in, like I'm in on Zapdos or something, just click the safe Icicle Crash, he goes Buzzwool, still takes like 30%, and then I HP Flying and knock that thing out. Uh, he might scout for it. I considered running, like I know the old UU set was like Z-Peck Mamoswine, but Z-Peck doesn't do a whole lot more than HP Flying, and I lose out on the Life Orb damage against everything else. Uh, so I felt like HP Flying just made a lot more sense in the long run. Uh, so I think that was kind of the, the right tech to bring on Mamoswine. He might predict it, but um, it was definitely definitely the right tech to bring with the Mamoswine. Last up here was Vulcan the Heat Ran. We're running Shed Shell Heat Ran with Flash Fire, Toxic, Stealth Rock, Lava Plume, and Flash Cannon. Shed Shell's there for the Dugtrio. If he comes in thinking he can trap me, I can just go right out into my Aerodactyl on a predicted Earthquake. Because uh, you don't like... I mean, you can predict Shed, shed Shell on something, and like you should know that I'd have it. But he could also think I'm like Shookaberry or something, trying to live an Earthquake. So I feel like it's not the most obvious thing in the world. Uh, so the Shed Shell is nice uh, from that perspective, if he did bring the Dugtrio. Uh, Toxic is really nice to get off on pretty much anything on his team, like... Buzzwool doesn't appreciate Toxic, Zapdos, Mew, Rotom Heat, um, what else doesn't appreciate Toxic, Curum, like a lot of these things are, his bulkier mons are worn down significantly by Toxic. I do have Flash Cannon on there so I can break uh, Substitutes Guaranteed on the Curum and get off some big damage if he doesn't have a sub up. Uh, it also kind of eliminates some prediction games where you could go into like a fire resist that's not a steel resist, things like that. I didn't feel like I needed an extra move on Heat Ran anyways. Lava Plume's there specifically for burns, if I can burn like a Mega Low Punny, if he tries to switch that thing in on me, that'll be really nice. And really any status on Pokemon on his team is helpful for me. Uh, under Sticky Webs I should out also outspeed Buzzwool and be able to whack that thing with a Lava Plume because its Spideff stat is basically non-existent. Um, so that was kind of the idea behind Heat Ran. Stealth Rocks are just nice to chip the team down. I can trade Stealth Rocks with Mew. I don't really care too much. I feel like if I get Sticky Webs up too, he's going to be pressured to defog anyways. Um, and I can also Toxic the Mew as well, uh, which would be really nice for my Conkeldur in the back. So, kind of a lengthy team builder there, but let's get into the match now. Uh, you can see on your screen he did bring the Buzzwool, Mew, Zapdos, uh, Low Punny, Greninja, and Nihiligo. So this is basically what I was expecting. I was thinking he might bring Dugtrio over Nihiligo, but the first five were close to guaranteed. Uh, I felt like Kyurem or Rotom Heat also could have came. Uh, maybe like bring Rotom Heat over Zapdos or something. But I feel like the the six he brought made perfect sense. Um, and I feel like going into it, I had a pretty solid game plan. Like 
Kinkelder's really good against his three on the right there. So if I can Toxic or eliminate the three on the left, Kinkelder basically runs Train on him. Mega Arrow also looks really good. He's definitely got a Choice Scarfer, like I mentioned. It's probably the Greninja or the Nihiligo. I'm going to have to scout that out. But uh, Aerodactyl looks really, really good here. I can force out Low Putting. I can force out Buzzwool. Go for an Home Claws. Um, potentially sweep late game uh, if I can remove whatever his speed control option is. Uh, and if we can probably, what I'm thinking is like a defensive, potentially Will-O-Wisp type Mew. Um, so that was kind of the idea here. On the lead here, Raibombi seems really obvious on my end. Uh, so I think he'd want to lead with something that could beat that. Potentially like a Nihiligo lead. Because uh, I feel like you just don't let me get sticky webs up for free or Quiver Dance for free or anything like that. Um... Uh, so I'm going to lead with my Aerodactyl, actually, predicting him to lead Nihiligo, and that way I can scout out immediately whether or not he's Choice Scarf Nihiligo, uh, because if he's not Choice Scarf, he should switch out uh, Fear and Earthquake, and if he is Choice Scarf, uh, he'll go for an attack, and I can swap out into my Muck uh, pretty comfortably on that thing and take basically no damage. So that's the idea here. I'm going to lead off with Aerodactyl, as he ends up leading with the Mew, so it's unfortunate that I didn't just stick to my planned lead and lead with the Raibombi, because I obviously would have threatened this Mew with Bug Buzz, potentially Quiver Dance in its face, or but mainly just gone for Sticky Web turn one um so i'm gonna have to switch out here fearing a will-o-wisp i don't want my aerodactyl getting burned this early in the game and i don't care if my muck gets burned um as he just goes for stealth rock so unfortunate there it doesn't look like he either didn't have the will-o-wisp or he um decided not to click it there in favor of, ro of rocks but i'm just gonna go for poison jab here buzzwool seems like an incredibly obvious switch in and getting a poison off on that thing would be really nice don't get it the first time which is unfortunate uh, because it does turn out that this thing has leftovers which automatically in my head you see leftovers on a buzzwool it's almost guaranteed substitute buzzwool uh, so i'm just gonna click flamethrower here as he does click substitute uh, he really had no reason not to there like i was thinking in my head so flamethrower there is gonna guaranteed break the substitute on this buzzwool and now it's got Kind of a guessing game here. He could go for another substitute if he has Roost or something like that, but I feel like Drain Punch is the best play on his end because he can get back pretty close to full, if not to full, with the Drain Punch uh, and it'll alleviate some of his predicting game if I go for another Flamethrower. So, predicting the um, Drain Punch, I go out into Ry Bombi. It turns out he goes for Earthquake, so he's got Earthquake on this thing, um, which means he's missing some kind of coverage move in some sense, or he's missing Roost on the sub buzzle. So, it's a little bit chipped, which is good for me. Obviously, he doesn't want to stay in here. He's got a really easy switch in in Nihiligo, so I'm just going to go for Sticky Webs. Uh, this will slow down whatever Choice Scarf option he's got. Also makes uh, everything that's not Choice Scarf, bar the Zapdos, of course, uh, slower than my Mamoswine, which is great for me. Uh, so getting the Sticky Webs up, and then getting a pretty easy switch into Muck here. A double and a Buzzwool could have been kind of scary there. Um, thankfully, he did not go for that, and he just goes for Power Gem. Again, he's probably not going to want to stay in here, but I'm just going to click Knock Off this time. Should whack this Nihiligo and also get rid of an item on something. If it is like the Buzzwool coming in, I can get rid of its leftovers. Uh, he goes Zapdos instead. It is Static Zapdos. We don't see pressure go off, so it is Static Zapdos. Thankfully, it does not paralyze me. Uh, Paras are just really annoying to deal with in general because it introduces the hacks element of like, am I going to get full parad this turn? So thankfully don't get parad there. He, he turned out to be a Rocky Helmet, so it's good that I got rid of that thing for my Kinkelder. I'm going to go for Poison Jab. Again, Static is a problem, but if I can get a Poison off on this thing, it'd be really nice for my Kinkelder in the back. He shows Whirlwind, actually, uh, as I go for the Poison Jab. Again, I don't get the Poison, so I'm really hoping I get the next one when I click it. Uh, but it worked out really nicely because I ended up getting out into my Mammoth Swine, which can just click Icicle Crash here. Like I mentioned during my Team Builder thing up front, Icicle Crash into HP Flying should KO this Buzzwool, uh, and based on that Icicle Crash damage, I'm pretty certain it's going to. Uh, so he's at 54%. He should not live this HP Flying. I'm just going to click it. If he goes out into anything else, it's going to be slower than me anyways, uh, and he does not scout for the HP Flying. He didn't really have a great scout in the first place. Like, I guess he could have gone Mew, maybe, uh, but even that thing would be taking some unnecessary damage. If I have Knock Off, it's more problematic for him. So I felt like he really didn't have a good scout anyways, uh, so I just clicked it. Um, now he's got the Greninja in. Pretty sure this thing's going to be Choice Scarf, because otherwise it wouldn't naturally outspeed me. Maybe he's thinking of an Earthquake or something, uh, but I'm pretty sure this thing's going to be Choice Scarf. He goes for Surf, and that is Scarf Damage, so it's not damage boosting, basically. So I'm definitely thinking right now this is Scarf Greninja, but I get a free Drain Punch here. I don't care what comes in, even Zapdos and Mew. Uh, I'll get some decent recovery back on. I need to keep my Kinkelder healthy for the late game so it can sponge hits from things like Low Punny, Nihiligo, and Greninja. Uh, so Drain Punch is fine there. Even though I only do 20% to the Mew, I get to scout out its set a little bit. Looks like he's pretty HP invested he does have leftovers uh, so it's good to know this is like a full defensive type Mew I'm just gonna go out into heat ran predicting maybe like a psychic move here um, as he's just gonna go for the defog so thank 
Uh, that's nice for me because it does get rid of the rocks which bother my Rybombi and my Aerodactyl. And I can set Stealth Rocks on my own here. I think it's more valuable to get off a Toxic right now. Uh, even if he goes like hard low punny, I'll at least have status off on that thing. But he stays in with the Mew. Synchronize, obviously not going to affect me because I'm a Steel type. Uh, and he just resets his Stealth Rocks I believe on this turn. Yes, so he got rid of the Sticky Webs, got his Stealth Rocks back up. Uh, now I can pretty freely get up Stealth Rocks on my own. If he predicts that and gets on the low punny, it's a little bit problematic to me. I'm going to have to sack something. Uh, but I feel like the better play here is just to get up my Stealth Rocks, chip down the rest of his team uh, to help me out in the long run. He actually ends up going Zapdos instead as I go for the Stealth Rock. So Rocks are up, and I can just Toxic the Zapdos too. He's pretty much forced to go for Roost right now because since he showed Defog on Mew, I don't think he's double Defog with Zapdos here. Um, so I'm just going to go for Toxic here. No matter what he wants to do, I think it's my best play. Um, and getting the Toxic off on the Zapdos is also really nice in the long run for my Kunky Elder. So the, bu the Buzzwool is gone, the Mew is a little bit chipped and toxic and the Zapdos is a little bit chipped and toxic, and Stealth Rocks are up. So looking pretty good for my Kunky Elder right now as he just goes for Volt Switch. I really don't need Heat Ran at this point in the match. It doesn't do a whole lot for me except maybe Sponge a hit from um, Zapdos occasionally, Sponge a hit from Mew, Sponge a hit from Nihiligo. Like, all those things aren't super necessary for me to win this game, so I've really got no reason not to stay in here and just spam lava plume with um heat ran this could potentially punish him if he goes low punny it is a 30 percent chance to burn with lava plume um, and over time with the toxic on both zapdos and mew i'm just going to be wearing those things down which is great for my kinkelder in the back so i'm just going to spam lava plume if he goes nihiligo he probably can't do much to me anyways i can just flash cannon that thing for damage uh so basically i'm pretty content to just stay in here with heat ran until i die unless he goes like hard greninja um for some reason not for some reason, that would make a lot of sense actually as a play. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to spam Lava Plume here. Keep this Mew nice and low. With Toxic Damage plus Lava Plume is really racking up on him. And he can't get in Low Punny potentially for free. It's going to take some damage and potentially get burned. Um, here I'm thinking, okay, the Stealth Rock is really obvious on my part. So I'm just going to click Lava Plume if he tries to get in Low Punny, which he does. Uh, unfortunately, I don't get the Punish Burn, but I do get a little bit chip off on Low Punny. Get to get out of set a little bit. It looks like he's actually got a decent amount of HP investment on this thing. And the roll is in my favor to live a Drain Punch here if he's not fully attack invested. So I'm just going to stay in and click Stealth Rocks. Like I mentioned, I really don't need Heat Ran at this point in the game. And I'd rather have the Stealth Rock chip on specifically like the Greninja in the back. is getting close to in Mach Punch range if it comes in on Stealth Rocks. Um, and the Zapdos as well is not going to appreciate the Stealth Rocks being up. So I'm just going to let him knock me out with a low punny here. I can go Aerodactyl and Revenge kill him afterwards anyway. Um, or just potentially set up a Hone Claws and force him out uh, into his Greninja after I kill something. I don't think you go hard Greninja here ever. Wing Attack I don't think knocks him out from the range he's at. But it'll do some massive damage and he won't be able to come in on Stealth Rocks later in the game. Or at least not as frequently. So I expect him to sack either Mew or Zapdos here. Not wanting to get static by the Zapdos, I'm just going to go for Hone Claws, um, because like I mentioned, I am predicting him to sack either Mew or Zapdos here. I'm guaranteed faster than both of them, because we've seen both their items. Uh, so I can just go for Hone Claws. Now my Stone Edges are 100% accurate, um, as I mentioned in the Team Builder. So I'm just going to click Stone Edge here, something dies. Um, I guess Low Punny technically wouldn't die, but why would you go back out into Low Punny when you die to Wing Attack afterwards? So, just going for Stone Edge here, knocking out the Mew. I think that was probably his best sack. Either that or Zapdos was his best sack. And now he's pretty much got to go back out into the Choice Scarfer, which is definitely now Greninja. Uh, so, 100% this is Choice Scarf Greninja. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, so, I'm just going to go out into Muck here, fearing a, sur a Surf. I do live a Surf, but if he has Hydro Pump, I don't live that. Um, and if I did live a Surf, I'd still be in Fake Out range from Mega Low Punny. He makes a really good play and goes for U-Turn. Um, able to get out into his Zapdos here. I think he probably could have gone Mega Low Punny and claimed another kill there. Uh, but I'm just as happy that he didn't because that, that means I get to keep my Muck. Uh, this Zapdos really can't touch... Well, it really can't touch me and it also can't touch my Mamoswine. So I do elect to stay in here with Muck. I probably could have switched out and got uh, preserved some health on this thing. But I'm just going to go for Poison Jab here. As he brings out the Low Punny. And finally, I get my Poison Touch Poison. So that's actually really nice for me, getting the Poison Touch on Low Punny here. It's going to keep him about in range for a Mach Punch to knock him out from my Kinkelder. Uh, even if he goes for Drain Punch to knock me out here, like I'm predicting him to. So that Poison's actually really, really clutch here late in the game. I am going to save my uh, Muck at this point. One, so that he doesn't get a lot of Drain Punch recovery back on me by going out into Raibombi. And two, because um, Raibombi I don't think does anything for me anymore. I don't really see a situation where I'm getting up Sticky Webs at this point in the match unless I get in like after Zapdos kills something. But I don't want Zapdos to kill anything else on my team right now. So I felt like um, Raibombi was a fine sack here. Um, like I mentioned, Sticky Webs... 
aren't super needed for me to win this game. Basically, Kinkelder is what's needed for me to win this game, actually. Uh, so I'm just going to sack off the Rybombi. I've got a couple options here. He might be in range of an Ice Shard from my Mamoswine. He's definitely in range of a Mach Punch from my Kinkelder. But I feel like the best option is just to go Aerodactyl and Home Claws once again on a predicted Zapdos sack. Uh, he makes a good play. He scouts out my Home Claws here and hits me with the Drain Punch. That gets actually a decent amount of health back on his Low Punny. But he is still in range of a Mach Punch. Just definitely out of range of my um, Mamoswine's Ice Shard currently. So... I'm gonna go for the Stone Edge here. Once again, it's 100% accurate, and he should drop from this range to Stone Edge with his low punny. So I have no reason not to click it, and we're gonna knock out the Zapdos sack. Um, so good play on Jed's part there, getting a little bit of damage off on me with his low punny uh, before sacking the Zapdos. That was definitely the right play. But now look at Kinkelder and look at his team. Like <laughs> everything is bodied by AV Kinkelder right now. So he goes back out into the Greninja. He basically has to click Surf or something else dies. Uh, so I'm just gonna go out into Muck and sack it off. Muck is the least useful member of the team at this point. While it could eat a hit from Nihiligo. Um, I feel like Kinkelder, getting in Kinkelder to click Drain Punch again is much more valuable to me because I'm only at like 70-ish percent right now and I'd like to get some health back and he can't sack Greninja or he just loses to Aerodactyl. So uh, I get to go Kinkelder here now that he's killed the Muck and just click Drain Punch. He either lets me kill this, which means Aerodactyl wins, he lets me kill Nihiligo, which I think is probably his best sack at this point, or he lets me kill Low Punny, which is a, also a very good sack here since it's in Ice Shard range. So he lets me kill the Low Punny. Actually, I think that was probably his better sack uh, was the Low Punny because A, I don't get a lot of uh, Drain Punch recovery back, and B, that thing was low enough that Mach Punch killed it anyways, Arrow beats it, and he was potentially in range of an Ice Shard, definitely in range after a turn of Poison. So I felt like that was probably his best sack. He gets to go Nihiligo now. If this is some kind of weird Psychium Z Nihiligo, or he crits me with Life Orb Psychic, or not Life Orb, Expert Belt Psychic, or something like that, um, I lose. So I have to scout for that and go out into my Mammoth Swine. The goal here is to try and get enough, enough Ice Shard chip off on this thing that I can just clean with Mach Punch. Uh, but because I'm not adamant, the Ice Shard's not quite going to do enough to guarantee a KO with Mach Punch. It's actually a roll pretty heavily in his favor to live the Mach Punch now, especially if he's got some... HP investment on this Nihiligo, so that was a situation, as you saw, he went for Sludge Bomb. I didn't actually have to switch out of Kinkelder, but I wanted to guarantee the win, or make the play that I thought could guarantee guarantee me the win. I don't mind sacrificing Differential if it's going to get me a win. Like, no reason to stay in there and risk the Psychic. Turns out he didn't have it, uh, so I can pretty freely come back in here with Kinkelder, click Drain Punch, and win the game. Because Drain Punch is going to knock out this Nihiligo. I'm outside of range of a Crit Surf anyways from the Greninja, or even a Crit Hydro Pump. Uh, but he's actually in range of a Mach Punch. So I'm just going to click Mach Punch here and knock out this Greninja. Uh, I think 71 is the minimum damage roll on that, assuming no bulk. He might have some in there, but I'm assuming he's close to no bulk on the Greninja. So Mach Punch should guarantee knock this thing out. And Kinkelder cleans up the game. So Kinkelder, absolute monster in this matchup. Picking up three kills. Like I mentioned, it was really good against his bottom row. Uh, if I could get it in at the right time. So um, I just had to kind of weaken the top row. And removing the buzzwall, like having the lure there with Mamoswine was really clutch to get rid of the buzzwall because that basically meant Kinkeller could run train. Uh, Mew didn't do too much to me anyways. Uh, it turned out I think that Mew didn't even have Psychic. I think it had Dazzling Gleam. Um, and it wasn't a setup Mew or anything like that. So Kinkelder was really, really good in this matchup. Even Zapdos didn't really do anything to me. Uh, in it, if he static me, yeah, I'd be paralyzed, but I would still get the Guts damage boost out of it, um, which would make my Mach Punch do even more damage. Um, so I felt like Kinkelder had a really good matchup here, and that's kind of how it played out in the end. Uh, one kind of unsung hero here is Alolan Muck. It got no kills this match and died but it put in some freaking work, man. Like, it just came in so so frequently on things like Greninja, things like Nihiligo, Zapdos, and just sat there and was able to spread damage around his team, got the poison on Low Punny late in the game, removed Zapdos's rocky helmet. Like, it was super, super clutch in this matchup. Prevented Buzzwool from subbing early game with that flamethrower. Like, super, super clutch from Alola Muck this match. Love this Pokemon. I mean, I loved using regular Muck in the Tier 3 and Below League, so I guess it's no surprise. Uh, Aerodactyl also had a pretty solid game. I think it picked up two kills uh, and, of course, threatened out that low punny on a couple occasions. Um, but, yeah, this is kind of how I was envisioning the team working. I don't think I'm going to be, like, 6 owing people for the most part. Like, even though my team is has a lot of natural bulk to it, it's not, like, fat, really. It's more like bulky offense. So I expect to be trading in some cases and just kind of 
basically winning those trades. Kind of like playing Smash, where you play a heavy and like you win those trades. Like Ganondorf wins all those trades. That's what the idea is kind of behind this team. Where I'm just winning damage trades in the in the long run. Like Kinkelder's winning damage trades. Uh, and drain punching back its health, things like that, and then cleaning up late game with Mon Punch. So, uh, really good game to Jed. Really, really fun game. Great way to start off the season for both of us, even though he, he ended up taking an L in this first one. I think he played really well. Um, and Jed's definitely uh, going to be a threat going forward in the season. I think he has some potential to make playoffs. Granted, I don't know most of these players um, <laughs> that I'm playing against, but I'm sure everybody's like very strong in the division, and Jed's no different. Like, he showed that this game played very well. Um, we just got a nice nice week one W. Uh, so again, GG to Jed. A really fun game. But uh, thank you guys all very much for watching to this point. If you did, I hope you tune in for week two. Uh, I think we're playing up against Maxed or uh, Masked Aura next week. I have to check that uh, on the schedule, but I think that's the right, uh, right player. So yeah, playing up against... Uh, I think Jed was actually the only person in my division that I knew coming into this league. Let me just check... Yeah, Jeb was the only person I knew coming into this league uh, in my division. So, not too bad um, in the first round here, picking up the W, but definitely interested to see how the rest of the season goes. Hopefully, we can keep picking up some more wins as we go along and make playoffs towards the end. So, thank you guys very much for watching. And if you did, um, free, feel free to leave a like and tune in for the next one. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good one. Bye.